Master Shen, why don't you listen to others? You absolutely must not f with other people. Bing Ge will lose it. Let me tell you right now. This regret of Chun Shan has become something like the Eighteen Touches. The two of you are legendary gays, no nationwide. Get it? You can go ahead and shut me up. I don't care because ultimately you'll be useless. You can't shut the mouths of everyone beneath the heavens. At last, Shen Qingqiu beat the crap out of Shang Qinghua the way he'd always wanted to. This asshole! This giant asshole! This kind of plot hole digging author, who not only refused to fill his holes but left everything unfinished, who rejoiced as his characters jumped the shark all the way to Siberia. Who even dragged his reader in to patch up his work, saying you can you up really deserve to be beaten to death. He was just about ready to drag the whimpering airplane shooting towards the sky, currently prone like a corpse, into a small patch of pitch black forest, so he could continue with said beating when he heard a familiar voice chanting, "Army dwarf war," behind him. Master Wu Chen said, "Pi Guo Chen." Is safe and sound, truly a thousand fortunes. Shen Qingqiu straightened and turned around to see the two abbots from Zhao Hua Monastery together with Yue Qingyuan, walking slowly in his direction. He tossed Shang Qinghua aside and tidied himself a bit, then smiled sincerely from his heart. Sect leader, Master Wu Chen, Master Wu Wang. There was no trace of weakness in Yue Qingyuan's complexion as he smiled back. Wu Wang sent Shen Qingqiu a side glance, then walked off somewhere else, full of disdain. He had the expression of an old Taoist, full of toxic feudal era ideals, who had just seen a fallen woman. Shen Qingqiu felt like he'd been struck by lightning and shivered. Please don't mind Wu Wang, Marshal Brother, Peak Lord Shen. Said Master Wu Chen. Ever since this one lost his legs at Jinglan City, he'd been filled with hatred toward the demon race, to the point even Peak Lord Shen. Shen Qingqiu rubbed his nose and said indifferently, "It's fine." Well, being disdained by a bald old donkey didn't matter much. Although, Master Wu Chen said. He's gotten much better now. In the period Tianlongjun has been staying in Zhao Hua Monastery, he's never given him a hard time. Your honored monastery took Tianlongjun into custody, asked Shen Qingqiu. Not really custody, said Master Wu Chen. This one only wishes to freely discuss Buddhism with him, while also helping relieve the decay of the Dew Mushroom Body. He'll stay for a couple of years until he's stabilized. Then he can go wherever. At that time, whether he wishes to continue wandering the human realm, or prefers to take Zhu Zilong's bones and return to the demon race, will all be up to him. This one believes that there is no anger within him, even if there had been once. It had since dispersed. Master Wu Chen's legs had been destroyed by the sowers in Jinglan City, when the sowers had been sent by Tianlongjun. Yet he hadn't taken this incident to heart at all. Shen Qingqiu's heart couldn't help but well with admiration. On top of that, the master's compassion was neither haphazard nor carelessly bestowed. At their final goodbye, Shen Qingqiu had also felt. That Tianlongjun no longer had any interest in destroying the world. From the start, it wasn't what he'd really wanted to do, or something he'd liked doing. It was just now that there was no Zhu Zilong to foolishly follow him around and foot his bills, or beat away miscellaneous soldiers, or collect interesting pocket books for him. It was probably inevitable that, at times, he'd feel sad, just like. The Shen Qingqiu at present, Zhao Hua Monastery's monks left first and walked toward Chongding Hall. But even though he was the sect leader, Yue Qingyuan didn't go with them. Instead, he stood in place, 
silently staring at Shen Qingqiu. For some reason, it became comparatively more awkward. As if testing the waters, Yue Qingyuan said, Xiao Jiu. Marshal brother, said Shen Qingqiu, it's Qingqiu. Even though it would be too difficult to tell Yue Qingyuan the truth, Shen Qingqiu still hoped he could demonstrate the difference in other ways. Yue Qingyuan was stunned for a bit, then gave a small smile. It's Qingqiu. Qingqiu, Marshal brother. Shen Qingqiu looked at Xuan Su's sword at his waist. He had yet to speak when Yue Qingyuan spontaneously said himself, Marshal brother, need not worry. After a few more months of secluded cultivation, all should be well for a time. Then sect leader must not impulsively draw his sword in the future, said Shen Qingqiu. Once cultivation can be improved, more breakthroughs can always be achieved, but one's life force can never be returned. Yue Qingyuan gently shook his head. One's life force is not the only thing that cannot be returned. The two of them walked slowly toward Chongding Hall. Along the way, they heard the joyful laughter of young disciples and the bursts of fireworks overhead. What are your plans for the future? asked Yue Qingyuan. I have no plans for the time being, said Chen Qingqiu. First, I'll wait for Luo Binghe to return and see how he's doing. Yue Qingyuan smiled. You truly adore that disciple. Shen Qingqiu was searching for a way to answer when Yue Qingyuan said, Marshal brother, Changchou Mountain will forever be a place to which you can return whenever you tire of wandering the outside world. These words were said with utmost sincerity and solemnity. Yue Qingyuan had always been this way. Whatever he promised, he would definitely deliver. And what he couldn't deliver, he would endeavor to make up for, no matter the cost. After assuming the role of this novel character, Shen Qingqiu had always refused to become the scum villain from the original work. He'd drawn a clear boundary between them and taken great pride in walking the opposite path. So never before had he felt such a powerful and impulsive thought. If only he really were Shen Qiu. If only that person could really hear these words. Shen Qingqiu's steps became slower and slower when suddenly, like he'd sent something, he raised his head and looked into the distance. On the other side of the crowd, right before it, was Luo Binghe. He stood at the foot of the white stone steps leading to Chongding Peak's main hall. He stood utterly alone, without a single person beside him. When the people walking past saw his face, their own faces filled with all sorts of expressions, Shen Qingqiu involuntarily ran forward a couple of steps, then turned his head to look at the person behind him. Go on, said Yue Qingyuan. He stood behind Shen Qingqiu, silent and with good grace. It was as if one was the past and the other the future. One year, the demon race had not known what was good for itself and so had come to Chongding Peak to provoke them with a show of strength. They'd spent a good chunk of time smashing, hitting, burning and plundering and had even smashed a bunch of floor tiles with a hammer. Luo Binghe was staring at a crack between the white tiles on the ground when he heard the familiar snap of a fan opening. A pair of white shoes stepped onto that stone crack, which was already spotted with green moss. He abruptly raised his head. Shen Jingqiu waved his fan. Don't say a word. First, let this master ask you. As a disciple, why did you not respectfully wait for your Shi Zun to wake up, but instead go to run about the outside world? Luo Binghe forced down his excited expression, suppressing himself. 
No one on Chanchil Mountain welcomes my presence, so I could only secretly come to check in from time to time. Just now, I didn't see Shi Zun in Lingxi Caves, and I thought that they hidden Shi Zun away, or that Shi Zun had left again. As Shen Qingqiu listened to this meek defense, he couldn't help but remember what Shang Qinghua had just said. If he hadn't gone around pestering and harassing everyone and everything, perhaps Luo Binghe really would have darkened to the core and become the young man in the original work, someone who would rend a person into a human stick with his bare hands, who cursed the world and himself, although now instead he'd become a lovesick young man so it wasn't really that much better, but at least he'd gained some lovable qualities, or at least Shen Qingqiu had finally realized that he was quite fond of them. Shen Qingqiu sighed. You knew you weren't welcome, and you still dutifully sent me back to Changqiu Mountain? I thought that when Shi Zun woke up, he would definitely prefer seeing Changqiu Mountain first. Without caring about his image, Shen Qingqiu broke character and smacked Luo Binghe's forehead with his fan. Resentful of Luo Binghe's actions, he said, Of course what this master most wanted to see first was you! Luo Binghe had taken a thwack with a fan, but he was so excited that his entire face flushed red his eyes becoming watery, like he wanted to speak but couldn't. Shen Qingqiu's entire body felt like he was going weak from his gaze. Then suddenly, sounds of yelling and the clang of blades rose around them. Yang Yixuan stood on the eaves on Chongding Peak's main hall and shouted, Sure enough, the demon ruffians came back to harass Shen Marshal Uncle. Hundreds of people responded to his call and someone immediately shouted along with them. That bastard still has a goal to show his face. Get your weapons. Where's my weapon? Hey, that's my sword, Marshal Brother. Give it back. If you want to fight, go back and get yours. No wonder Luo Binghe hadn't hung around and waited for him to wake up. Merely showing his face on Changqiu Mountain had people screaming their intent to attack him. The warmth of his welcome was eminently clear. <clears throat> ah, not bad. Your judgment was correct, Shen Qingqiu said helplessly. Under these circumstances, sneaking in is indeed your only option. I already said before that I wasn't welcome here, Luo Binghe said in a quiet voice. Shen Qingqiu patted his head. That's fine. Shi Zun welcomes you. Chongding Peak clamoured with roars for violence, some genuine, some insincere, raring to have a go, just a bunch of people who craved nothing but havoc, in even greater numbers with a peaceful passerby, all turning a blind eye to the devil in human form that was Luo Binghe. Shen Qingqiu didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Why don't we leave them? he asked. For a moment, Luo Binghe couldn't manage to react. Leave? Shen Qingqiu nodded. Didn't you say that you weren't welcome here? Then let's leave and go somewhere that does welcome you. He added, This time, no matter where you wish to go, this master will accompany you. Luo Binghe's face had always appeared very quick and clever, but now his expression was thoroughly dumbfounded because of these few words. It was hard to look at. Other than Changqiu Mountain's disciples, Chongding Peak was also packed with cultivators from various sects who'd come to attend the celebration. On top of their senses being sharp, Shen Qingqiu had also deliberately refused to lower his voice. So, of course, everyone had heard him very clearly. As one, they all feigned ignorance. The ones who'd been watching the fireworks pointed and gestured at the sky, and the ones who'd been lightly chuckling now laughed loud enough to raise the roof. 
They were being very cooperative, showing consideration for Changchou Mountain's dignity. But Liu Qingge didn't appreciate this. He jumped down from the eaves and yelled at Chen Jingqiu, practically incoherent with rage. Hey! Xi Jingqi was beside herself with anger. I don't care anymore. Go wherever you like, Shen Jingqiu. You both of you, Mingye, let's go. What are you looking at? What's there to see is this is your first time bearing witness to such shamelessness? Marshal sister, careful of the karma in your words. Mind the image of our respected Changchou Mountain. Exactly what deep-set image did Changchou Mountain have in the people's hearts outside of covering for the faults of their own, their director of demolitions, their intimacy with demons, and their master disciple pair who'd starred in a famous porno? Shen Jinchu considered this for a while and came up empty. Initially, he'd been pulling Luo Binghe along by the hand. Who knew when it had become Luo Binghe pulling him along instead? He felt those five fingers on the back of his hand slowly tighten, clamping down until it hurt. Luo Binghe gently raised his head, and the entire night sky with its river of stars sparkled within the depths of his pitch-black eyes. It was almost like, if he wasn't careful, some glittering treasures would fall from them. Shen Jinchu took all this in stride, Looking back on everything, his heart had transformed, becoming like that of an old monk on a pilgrimage to retrieve scriptures. He'd suffered through 81 hardships and, after much pain and struggle, finally produced the right result. So let him cry. After all, Luo Binghe always behaved like this way. A plot with so many ups and downs and such intense chaos and disorder to the point that it was constantly like being struck by lightning on a clear day. Honestly, Shen Qingqiu also wanted to burst into tears. And with this peerless bizarre book's complete and successful transformation, great master aeroplane shooting towards the sky's career was now doubtlessly devoid of regrets, while the unparalleled ranting critic, peerless cucumber, could no longer say he disdained it the way he once had either. The author wouldn't fill in the plot holes, so this great one had been forced to take matters into his own hands. In the long river of history of great and mighty Zhongdi and Stallion novels, what reader had led the charge like him? Heartily coughing up blood while putting himself on the line to fill in plot holes, just to rescue the B-points of a brainless power fantasy, a peerless marvel of a work that had the writing quality of a grade school essay. Even though the direction had gone a bit awry during said rescue process, at least he'd really managed to achieve you can you up, no can no BB. The moment Shen Qingqiu had flipped open proud immortal demon way, the story had begun but as he shut Proud Immortal Demon Way, the story had yet to end. Or perhaps the story circulating through the world might already have ended. But the story between you and me has only just begun. <laughs>